Shabbat Shalom from Jim and Debbie Lehman and Wellspring, Israel. Oh, we call you blessed. What a wonderful time of the Lord. You know, Genesis um, 114 talks yeah. about times and seasons and Moads that God instituted, set up for his relationship with man. And we're in a wonderful month of Elul and God is speaking. And tonight we're going to talk about that. And we just thank you for joining us on this Shabbat. And if this is your first time to join us, we're Jim and Debbie Lehman, and we are founders of Wellspring Israel. For the last 24 years, we've been teaching uh, Jewish Roots of Christianity and how to get in sync and uh, and in follow and mm -hmm. step with God's biblical calendar, uh, supporting Israel and the Israeli people. And we are so honored that you decide to listen to us either on the Now Television Network or our YouTube channel, Wellspring Israel. Do us a favor, uh, click your like button and notification button and subscribe to our channel. And would you please uh, be a media missionary oh, and uh, share our platform with your social media. Uh, this helps get our message out and we are so blessed and honored. We have to say we're getting a lot of, uh, of views on our channel and we appreciate that. And we thank you for the comments and for what you're sharing with us. We are honored and humbled. There's many people teaching what we've taught. When we taught it, started this 24 years ago, there was only one or two. <laughs> and uh, people thought we were crazy. But you well, people still yeah. think we're crazy too. And that's all right, <laughs> because we are crazy for Jesus. Well, you know, the thing is, is God wants his revelation uh, an understanding of his feast days um, to reveal the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the earth. And so there is an awakening among the remnant to understand there are ways to connect the dots with the presence of God and the Hebraic understanding of God um, that bring things full circle and understanding God's divine timing uh, brings revelation and prophetic focus. And so we teach about getting connected and in mm -hmm. sync with God's calendar, which are the feasts of the Lord, the Moads, the, the monthly Moads, Absolutely. which is the new moon, and the Shabbat, uh, which is on Saturday, sundown at Friday night to sundown Saturday night, and walking in the feasts of the Lord, the monthly uh, focuses and, and discipleship, and walking with our Savior. And then, of course, weekly right. on Sabbath or Shabbat. And so we we want to talk to you tonight about the month of Elul. We started that. Uh, we're now about uh, three or four days into the month of Elul. And uh, we are appreciative. Debbie doesn't like that because <laughs> we're pre-recording this. So when this is Don't recorded, so when this is recorded <laughs> on Friday, uh, the uh, 14th for the TV channel, yeah. it will be 10 days yeah. of a law. But tonight on Wellspring <laughs> Israel YouTube channel, it's the third day. It'll be beginning of the fourth day. Aren't you so glad that I, God's in the day and on the day and already <laughs> gone before us to pray? Oh, my us goodness. In all ways, right? So she's always tapping me on the shoulder. And <laughs> if you see me do this, that means she's tapped me on the shoulder and she's correcting me. Yeah. Or she's telling me, just don't tell them the dates because we're recording part of this and part of this is live and whatever. Oh, so have my fun with us. My it's brain Elul. is like, I can't get this straight. We're in the month of Elul, and that is the, in Hebrew, I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. It's the month of to be nurtured. It's the month to allow the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit to nurture us. It's the month to draw near to God and he will draw near to us. Right. It is the month when the king is in our field. Oh, uh, king hallelujah. Jesus is yeah. in our field. And uh, it is a 40 day period uh -huh. starting with the first day of Elul right. and going through Rosh Hashanah, the day of atonement. In Hebrew, Yom Kippurim means, of course, a uh, day of covering or one atment with God. And so for 40 days, we blow the shofar right. and we sound the alarm because it's a time of teshuvah. And teshuvah means to repent and to turn away mm -hmm. from sin and to return to God's uh, favor and his blessing in our lives. That's right, because the feast days are coming and what they represent. 
And God's saying, I want your attention. I want you to return to me. I want you want to blow that? See if, you blow that. see if I can do it right now. Oh, okay. I have lipstick on. It may be difficult. So the shofar would be blown all over Israel um, to awaken the children of Israel of the divine timing of God that uh, they were coming into. And those 40 days of blowing the trumpet are wonderful because the sound of awakening comes and the sound uh, of from heaven touching earth. It's time to gather. It's time to repent. It's, it's time to reconnect with the Father for renewal, for recalibration because of where we're well, going. And it's also a time to a look at the past year. Yeah. And have we followed the great commandment and the second greatest commandment? And that is to love God with all our heart, soul, and mind and love our neighbor as ourself. And areas where we've fallen short of that or we've missed the mark on that, it's That's a time right. of repentance. It's a time of covenant. This is the time when Moses had to go back up on Mount Sinai after he broke the tablets when they were, when they were worshiping the uh, golden calf. And for another 40 days, he went back up on top of Mount Sinai. And this is where he chiseled the covenant of God himself. And so I think another thing that's important, this is the month when uh, in Haggai chapter yeah. one, uh, God told him that it was time to rebuild the temple, right. uh, that the temple was going to be rebuilt. And it's a time for us to reestablish mm -hmm. our covenant and our the place mm -hmm. of throne room of Jesus, Yeshua, HaMashiach in our minds, in our hearts. It's the the month to run into the strong power of the Lord. It's the month that we pray Psalms 27 every day and that God has prepared us through the Psalms to decree and declare his heart for this very timing. It's the month of the tribe of Gad. And so what would be the significance of the tribe of Gad? Well, there are characteristics that you can see from this tribe that God wants to nurture in our lives as well. Uh, Gad was the seventh son of Jacob. His mother was Leah. The maidservant was Zilpah. In his birth, welcomed by Leah with a cry, and his name means fortunate. See, God, God has blessing for us. God has set in order in our days to walk in his blessings and in his, the goodness of the Lord will go before us in the land of the living. Well, Jacob's blessing in Genesis uh, 49, 19 says, Gad, a troop shall, a tramp, there shall tramp upon him, but he shall triumph at last. In other words, Gad will fight, Gad will face adversity. And Gad is going to have to go to war and stand with God, but he's going to be victorious. He may suffer attacks from the enemy, but he's going to be victorious over the enemy. And Gad, Moses also said that Gad provides, um, the tribe of Gad was granted their inheritance and they did enter into the promised land. And Gad stood with the other tribes to go to war. Mm -hmm. They were faithful. And they were, God was, uh, Gad was faithful to their commitment in standing with God and warring with other tribes. And there was a blessing because of that, of inheritance released unto them. And mm -hmm. so we see that Gad is given an inheritance next to Zebulun in Ezekiel's description of the coming kingdom and stationed, listen to this, at the west gate of the new Jerusalem with Asher and Naphtali. So God has eternal purposes well, what I for like, Gad as well. Well, I, what I like about that is it's a t it, this is the season when God established the nation yes, of, of Israel, Israel mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And this is the season to pray for Israel. We know that they're in a war on three fronts, from the northern border with Lebanon to, to Gaza and now into uh, the West Bank, Samaria and Judea. And this is a time to, to pray for the nation yeah, of Israel, absolutely. but it's also the time to pray 
for your nation, wherever you're listening to us or viewing this broadcast, it is time for us to call out to the nation, call out to God for the nation. And uh, uh, I'm reminded of the prayer, if I can find it here real quick, I'm going to turn to it, the prayer in Acts chapter 4 that Peter prays after uh, the Sanhedrin had uh, arrested them mm -hmm. and wanted to uh, have them threatened to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. And it's a great prayer because um, it is modeled after Jeremiah 32, 26. And uh, uh, so uh, Peter writes, Peter writes this, or Luke writes this about Peter. Uh, he says this, he says, uh, and being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant, David said. And so what he was reminding God was of how great he was. And he really was copying the prayer in Jeremiah 32, 32 26, where Jeremiah prayed, prayed, O Lord God, you are the God of heaven. You are the God of earth. Nothing is impossible for you. And so when things look dark mm -hmm. in the nation, when things look dark in the place that we're living, we can cry out and come boldly to the throne. And this is the season of a lull to do that. Well, also, I think of a lull as um, a time where it's a love letter to uh, from God to his children, uh, for you are my beloved, my beloved is mine. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, there in these 40 days uh, with the blowing of the shofar, there is a divine invitation to enter into uh, covenant with uh -huh. God, mm -hmm. a divine invitation to return. And that's what the Feast of the Lord are about. They are invitations, not an obligation. And um, we're not saying that you, you need to be Jewish, uh, but rather embrace God's timeline and purposes for the season. And when we embrace his timeline and purpose for the month of Elul, it sets us for that which is to come that which God has prepared for us. And God says, I have so much good fortune. I have so much blessing. I have so much promise that I want you to walk into that there are things that you're not going to be able to walk into carrying the false identity of the past, the false idols of the past, the things that he wants you to lay down in this month as we return to him, because God's taking us somewhere. God has provision for us. He wants us, and we're going to talk about 5785, I know, uh, on our next three broadcasts, but God is preparing the way for us. And well, how do we step in? It's, it's, it's the returning to him. Well, I like what you said. It's, uh, this is a time not of obligation. No. It is a time of invitation. We're not obligated to celebrate the Feast of the Lord, mm -hmm. but God invites us. And this is the month when God draws near right. to us mm -hmm. for a time of reflection, um, a time of reflection, a time to right the wrongs in our lives, to heal broken relationship. It is time to prepare ourselves for the coming Feast of Tabernacles, right. which will begin October the 3rd. And, and then with Rosh Hashanah, and then 10 days later with uh, Yom Kippur, which is the 12th and 13th of October, and, and then five days later is the Feast of Tabernacles. And so this is a time for us to draw near, and, and, and it's an invitation. Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, I will give you rest. My burden is light, my yoke is easy. And, and so this is the time for us to do that, and uh, the king is in our field. Oh, he is. You know, one of the things I enjoy of this time is blowing the shofar. I blow the shofar on the land and in the house every day because I understand that the shofar is a breaking sound, the breaking off of things in the home that you don't want or mindsets, but it also brings things to fruition. So there is purpose in the blast of the shofar. 
Amen. And so what else did you ask me? I lost. Well, <laughs> I, I was talking about uh, the king is in your field. Oh, this okay. So the, yes. the biblical yeah. example or model of the king is in the field is in the book of Ruth. And in the book of Ruth, it speaks of a widow that married a unbelieving Jewish man and her family. Naomi was, uh, Naomi was her uh, mother-in-law and they traveled to Midian because there was a famine in Bethlehem, the place of bread. Mm -hmm. Rather than staying in the house of God, rather than staying through difficult times, we have a tendency to run. We have a tendency to back away from the very place we need to be in God under his shelter and in that covenant. And so she took the way of the mindset of man and moved into another land. But that land, it was not greener on the other side. That land had false gods and idols and brought great sorrow in her life. And she came to herself and realized she needed to go back to the house of bread. And That's there right. Ruth says, I will go where you go. I will follow your God. And uh, the story of Ruth is, and, and Naomi is so powerful because God shows up in those four so, chapters. So in Midian, all of their husbands die. Yeah, there's death. And they're all widows. And the word came back to Naomi that back in Bethlehem, her hometown, yeah. there was, of course, provision. provision and bread. So they came back. And in that day, widows had no standing. Uh, widows were uh, second-class citizens, you might say. They uh, were impoverished. And so it was in the season of the fall harvest when they would harvest the fields, the landowners, with the servants, but they would leave food or grain, excuse me, in the corners of the field right. so that uh, the poor could come and get enough sustenance to live day to day. And Ruth finds herself in a landowner's field named Boaz. And Boaz means kinsman redeemer. Right. And Boaz recognizes her and he asks his servants who she is. Right. And he um, also instructs them to protect her and to help her glean around the outer edges even more than enough. And so we see our kinsman redeemer. Uh, will be our prote protector and our provider. And he comes into the field. The king is in the field. The king, the lion of the tribe of Judah, roaring in the field. Well, how is that? Boaz is a type or shadow right. of, of, of Messiah, Yeshua, mm -hmm. King Jesus. Mm -hmm. Not it, not is, but is a forerunner or a type or shadow. Yeah. And he takes care of those that are in need, those who... Uh, are lost, have lost their family, have lost their way, have not been able to find the uh, life that was promised them because of the things that have happened to them. And so uh, we know that Ruth is not a Jewish person. Right. She was not born in a Jewish family. She was Gentile, but she was married uh, into a Jewish family. And then her mother-in-law understood the Jewish traditions of this time and said, this is the time, go into the field and go into Boaz's field. She, mm -hmm. she specifically said he has a good reputation. Right. Okay. And go and he, and you'll find enough food in that field. Well, you know, this time where the King is in our field, he's, he's coming and, and tabernacling with us. And I'm going to share the vision I had last year again regarding the king is in the field. And so during this vision, I'm sitting with Jesus. He's entered into my field. We're sitting and I'm showing him my field, my life, what I've been working on the last year, what I've been praying about, what I, the, the soil that I've been tilling, uh, the watering, all. Mm -hmm. And, but then I said, but Jesus, I know you had great grace for me this past year, but I'm crying out for mercy because I see what is ahead. And I see there are places in my field that are yet barren or places in my field that are rocky. And Jesus gets up. And he walks over to the corner of my field. And I look and I say, Jesus, what are you doing? 
And now Jesus is strong and mighty, muscular, and he's bent over and he begins to pick up boulders, large rocks. What are you doing, Jesus? He said, Debbie, I'm doing what you cannot do. You see, when the king comes into the field, he will put things into order. He, reveal, he will reveal the barrenness, but he will reveal his love and his grace on how to walk out into that which he has for us. And so this time that the king is in the field, we can rest and know that he will labor and we can rest. And how do you rest? It's, it's trusting in him and returning to your first love that that my bridegroom will cover me with his love for I am his beloved. Well, also it, it's in a, in a Hebraic understanding, it is a picture of when the king leaves the palace yeah. and becomes one of them or one of the people. When the commune, king, to commune, to, to yeah. commune and yeah. to have audience with them, to uh, rub shoulders with them, to tabernacle with them. And we know that's what Yeshua King Jesus did when he left heaven and became a man and dwelt among us, according to John 1, 14, and the, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so this is the picture. And in fact, in a lull is when Jesus himself was baptized by John the Baptist, whose father Zacharias should have been the high priest, but was stolen from him and was Jesus's cousin of all things. And Jesus goes and is baptized on a lull day one. And then the spirit leads him into the wilderness for 40 days. And on the 40th day, he comes back and he reads from the scroll in Isaiah 61 in the temple, which is what is read on Yom Kippur. So we know this is the season that represents when Jesus became flesh and dwelt among us and tabernacled with us because he wants us to to uh, understand, to experience yes. his forgiveness, yes. his restoration, right. his salvation, his, his redemption. That's right. You know, with the king being in your field, I, I think of that he wants to do business with our lives because he wants to bring things in order where there, again, where there has been chaos and stress and strife, those things will kill the seeds of our life, the good seeds, right? right? And he wants to water and set things back in order. And I think of when the shofar blessed, I think of the trumpet of the Lord. I think of uh, his presence in our field uh, because he wants to come in, not only set things in order, but we talk a lot about sifting and shaking. He wants to shake the things out of our field that are not of God, the false identities, the false idols, the things that you bow to or we coveted. The soulish the ways of thinking that do not line up to the right. word of God. Yes. So he wants to shake those things out of our mm -hmm. field mm -hmm. so we will be fruitful so that we can walk in great blessing. And uh, so that is what he's doing at this well, time when we submit and surrender to him. So we finish the story. Naomi, Naomi tells Ruth to go to the threshing floor. Oh. And when Boaz is asleep, lay down next to him. Mm -hmm. And this happens. And uh, God blesses Ruth to become the wife of Boaz. Okay, so she came from a Gentile background, right. non-Jewish. She, she serves her mother-in-law. She serves the Jewish people mm -hmm. and she carries herself. I put in my notes, she does not walk in anger or contempt because of her circumstances. She carries herself in a way with that demands respect and honor. Now that's something that's interesting. When we become victims and we're not victorious, we carry ourselves with anger, contempt, and we blame others for our circumstances. Mm -hmm. She didn't do that. And she served her mother-in-law who represents the Jewish people. The apostle Paul said, give to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Okay. And she does this and she is, she was married then to Boaz, this land on owner, this one that's called Kisman Redeemer. And out of this union, 
God blesses, he ordains it because he ordains marriage and holy matrimony is a holy estate uh, and, and he blesses that. And so then we see that they have a son named Jesse. Well, the covenant released the blessing of the generation. It released the purpose. It released the destiny that the enemy tried to encroach and steal and rob and take out of the timing of God. And God reinstituted through the covenant, the generational blessing and lineage where Jesus comes as Messiah. And from the covenant, they have a son named Jesse. Yes. And Jesse has a son named David, who became King David and wrote the Psalms. And, and out of this was the lineage of the tribe of Judah, which became the lineage of Yeshua King Jesus, HaMashiach, our Savior and Messiah. And so what looked like an impossibility, yeah. and we go back to Jeremiah 32, 26. O Lord God, the Lord who's created the heavens and the earth yeah, and the sea and everything that lives in them, yeah. is anything impossible too difficult for you? Nothing is impossible Nothing. for him. Amen. And so we see out of, and this is the season that we prepare ourselves right. for the feast coming up in the right. fall. Yes. And it's an awesome time to be together with the Lord. Oh my goodness, our time has gotten away, but what a wonderful month of Elul, returning to our first love. And we so appreciate uh, you praying for us. We have our Africa trip in just a few days our ministry there to pastors. We're so thankful for this opportunity and for your blessing, for your giving, for your prayers. Thank you so Pray much. Pray for us. And if you'd like, please seed into this trip. We're doing this by faith and we would deeply appreciate and we thank those that have already done so. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we meet again. God bless.